In this video, I'm going over Webmin, an essential tool for pretty much any system administrator out there that wants to manage a Linux computer remotely or from just an external source. So there's gonna be two parts to this. The very first part, I'm gonna show you the installation process. And then in the second part, I'm gonna actually show you and give you an overview of what Webmin is, how to administer it, how to use it. Uh, it's extremely powerful. A lot of servers I put up, I do Webmin on, just because it's so easy to administer that server and modify, update it, reboot it, I mean, you name it. Uh, it's really pretty awesome. The only time I don't use Webmin is if it's a really underpowered server, maybe only one processor allocated to that virtual instance, and then I don't typically do it. But a pretty beefy server, I don't mind doing Webmin on. Just know that if you have like a one-off, command line only, SSH server that has one gig of memory and one CPU allocated to it, it's probably not worth doing webmin on. That's just going to be a horrible experience. I recommend at least two to four CPUs and probably a minimum of about four gigs of memory before I'd even bother with webmin. So that's kind of my requirements. Uh, again, those aren't really like have to. You can install it on lesser machines. It's just, in my point, why? I mean, it's practically nothing at that thing. And usually those machines are only doing one thing. So I never usually use Webmin for that. But for the multi-purpose Linux boxes out there, Webmin is very sufficient. So let's get into installing and then we'll move on to how to actually use Webmin. So let's install Webmin real fast. Um, the quick way to install it, now you need to do a LAMP stack ahead of time, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. If you don't have an entire web server set up, Webmin will not work. Webmin's directed towards system administrators. So with that said, we have a working Apache server, a working PHP, a working MySQL. Um, we're ready to install Webmin. Very first thing I see people do, and it's a complete incorrect way to install Webmin, is let's go to CD, ETC, APT. And from here, a lot of people directly edit the sources.list file. And if you look at my sources.list file, you'll notice it only has official Debian repositories. It's very important your sources.list file stays clean. Do not put crap in here. Um, it's a new mistake, one I've made on stream and in videos. Um, I'm definitely coming back and saying, hey, don't do this, it's bad. Uh, so I've gone back and fixed my issues with that. So um, from here, let's go into cd sources.list.d. This is where you need to make the file. And as you see, I do have other repositories. I have Wine, Team Viewer, uh, Licorice, uh, well, that's a custom Linux kernel, Google Cloud SDK, and then a basis.list. And if you look out of these, you'll notice that there's only one line in each one of these, which is how you want it. You want to be able to easily come into your sources.list and disable this if need be, or you have a problem repository. The reason why it's nice to break these apart is if there is an issue with this on the main repository, instead of failing and hard doing a hard fail when you do your APT update, it'll just fail on this one repository and then just keep going. Um, so kind of cool so let's make a webmin repository so we're gonna nano webmin dot list this will create the file once we do sudo nano webmin dot list and we paste this file right in uh, this will actually be in the description down below if you want to copy paste from here control o and output and exit and webmin's ready to go let's go ahead and grab the gpg key next to do this we are going to do a wget let's uh, go ahead and go into the root directory all right from uh, the root directory here we're going to go ahead and grab i'm actually running as root right now i don't recommend but since i'm doing a gpg key i like to put them all in the root directory so we're going to paste this right here grab this key and then we simply apt key add jcam with that this key is installed and we can now just do an apt update and you'll see the webman right there on the screen 
And obviously I haven't done an update in a while, 332 packages. Eee. <laughs> but with that, we should be able to actually install Webmin. So let's go apt install Webmin. With this, it'll grab any dependencies it needs and install them. All right, Webmin is installed. If you look right here at the output, it says install complete. You can now log in using your local host and this as your password. So uh, we can go ahead and pull up that. If you have problems with SSL, which is HTTPS, you can go ahead and kill the SSL on the server and log directly in through port 80. Obviously, if this is a forward facing server, I don't recommend doing this. I recommend keeping SSL whenever possible. But if it's just a local server that no one else has access to but you, you can go ahead and kill SSL. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and pop over to ETC and show you how to do that. So from ETC Webmin, we are needing to modify our nano the miniserve.conf file. Miniserve.conf, you just come down to where it says SSL, back out, write it, and then we simply system control restart webmin. And this will restart the webmin service now that we've added the comp, and now we can actually launch into webmin and do our configuration. Remember, it's gonna be root and then the root password to log into webmin or something that has sudo or root privileges, uh, your normal user probably won't suffice for this, what we need to do, because this is a system administrator tool. So with that, I'm gonna jump over and log into Webmin, and I'll see you on that screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Webmin. As far as the actual, once you get it installed, loaded up, this is my Minecraft server right here. Uh, you can see a really awesome heads up display. You can see, is it out of date, running processes, total memory, virtual memory, all these things just right at your fingertips. Uptime is about five hours because I just rebooted it after I installed Webmin and kind of configured it earlier today. So with all this, this is what you're looking at. Let's sh show some of the neat things. Recent logins is basically all the IP uh, that have been logged into here. So I usually hit this up just to verify that those are my IPs. Um, you know, that's always a good idea just to kind of look at. I'm not gonna click it here because I don't wanna expose my personal IPs to you. <laughs> so with that, uh, you know, this is just current disk space usage down here as well. And if you don't wanna see them, you can just click the little triangle here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on the left side and we can jump into the actual navigation pane. This portion, I don't really mess with theming or anything like that. All I do is click this for daylight and in nighttime, obviously dark theme rules because who doesn't use a dark theme? Maybe your grandma, but that's about it. Just saying. So with that um, webmin configuration, you can do some actual configurations in here. However, most of this I've done already and I don't really like this particular screen. Some people like using it, I don't particularly care for it. But yeah, for this portion of it, I don't really use any of these sub menus, so I'm not gonna go through them. Now system, I do use quite often. Uh, boot up and shut down shows you what services are being loaded. So are they starting at boot and are they running right now? That's pretty awesome. It's really nice just to kind of flip through here and go, oh, okay, these are all the services that are running, like fail to ban is a great uh, great service and it is up and it is running. And you know you can kind of just do some troubleshooting with just this screen, which is awesome. Change passwords, I, you can guess what that does. Disk and network file systems, obviously since this is a VPS, I don't have access to disk or network file systems, so I'm not gonna show you that. Running processes, this is like a top command, which is nice you can kind of see what is being used. Typically I come in here, I say, hey, what's taking up the most memory? Uh, obviously a JavaScript's running, hogging up 10 gigs of memory. Um, that is my Minecraft. Boom, that is obviously going crazy on this server. And then you get some other stuff like fail to ban servers going. So if it gets attacked by a DDoS or something like that, it'll be able to ban those users. And then we got some other miscellaneous in here. So kind of nice just to kind of see, hey, what is using all of 
the services and scheduled cron jobs this is pretty awesome for scheduling certain things that need to happen instead of having to do like a cron tab and manually edit in terminal um, you can actually come in here and do it all from the gui software package updates this will actually show you doing refresh is the same as doing apt update and then it'll say hey these packages are available and display them so let's see it's refreshing package contents and refetching it found no updates which i didn't expect it i updated like literally five hours ago but if it did it come into here and then you could simply either schedule the upgrade or do the upgrade right then and there now, if you're searching for a specific package, like let's say Nano, you could actually search for that and it would say, hey, Nano is right here and then you could install it. Now, obviously I've already installed Nano, um, so you could actually click this and hit uninstall to uninstall Nano, which is pretty awesome as well. Other thing in the systems tab that you'll constantly use as a system admin is the system logs. It's so nice to come in here and go, okay, uh, my cron job, my scheduled job didn't come in here. You could actually come in here. Now it's actually not enabled, so let's go ahead and activate that. And all we do is click logging active, yes, and hit save. From here, cron will now be activated. So anytime a cron job runs, it'll log it and put it in this log. Now, the main logs you typically look at is the syslog, and we can actually pull this up real fast and see what's kind of been going on in the syslog. And you can see not too much has actually been happening. Um, some app armor errors here. I don't even think I have app armor installed right now, so probably need to clean that up, install that. But past app armor, uh, nothing really that sticks out in my brain out of that log and then also the mail.log This is nice just to come in just because I didn't set up post fix yet on this server and if it's sending out a bunch of mail I need to know about it and this just kind of gives you a quick look. There's really nothing in here um, that pops out at me so Between those two logs. There's not too much else. I really go into on a daily basis unless there's something that kind of calls my attention to it like if I need to look at who's been logging in the authorization log is actually pretty good I'm not going to click into that because it's going to show my IPs <laughs> and I don't want to display that for this video so with that uh, that is pretty much the system tab so let's go ahead and go down into servers servers are things and services that are currently running I have Apache installed postfix for email um, and then SSH so SSH obviously comes pretty much standard on any of these servers and really you can set up and do a lot of configuration in here, which is neat and do access control and other things, um, which is pretty awesome. So let's go into others here. We got command shell, which pulls up terminal, which is kind of neat. So you can do LS and let's go CD, go to the root device and you can kind of see everything setting up. So kind of a neat little tool and it's also down here in your tray so you can go boom and pull up terminal from down here as well. So pretty powerful stuff. Um, if you access through the web you can just do a command shell here. File manager if you want like a GUI file manager this is actually very good you can get around as well and delete files upload files those types of things. The one other command I also wanted to show on here is upload and download. There's a lot of times I set up a server and I'm like, oh crap, there's a whole bunch of stuff I need to download. And some of them are really sizable files, like a gig or two gigs. And what you can do is actually list the URLs in here, say put in my home directory or wherever you might have them, assign them to this user. And then it goes ahead and downloads all those files and then you can come back in a couple hours and go oh sweet there's all my files from the w gets that this did and you're ready to rock so that's pretty cool especially when building a big project from source very handy networking um you can do i don't really use bandwidth monitoring fail to ban intrusion detector set this up every single server without a doubt uh fail to ban is awesome i can't speak highly enough about it but uh, you can get in here do some extra configurations linux firewall obviously set this up anytime you launch this right now i do a couple port passes for minecraft um some http stuff and then port 10,000, which is webmin 
and then uh, my port 22, which on SSH, I am very, very paranoid about people hacking into SSH. So I do tar pitting, I do fail to ban, I do a lot of things when it comes to SSH to try and lock that down. And I'm gonna make a separate video about securing SSH because if you open up port 22 to the outside world, and you don't do anything and just barely set up the firewall, you're just asking for trouble. You're just asking for it. So definitely, I can't emphasize enough, secure port 22. And I'll do a future video about securing SSH as well. Under the hardware tab, there's really nothing to note. Uh, nice thing I like to do is get into system time and changing the time zone from here. That's pretty epic because it's super easy to just do it from a drop down and hit save, and it changes the time zone across the server. Uh, so much easier. Clustering, I don't really use Webmin in clustering. Unused modules, um, you can actually click on these and install them directly if you wanted to. Like let's say I was gonna set up a proxy server using Squid. I could actually click here, install it and download and install it through the APT. Um, and then configure it directly through this module configuration. Once installed, it would actually come up into probably like servers at that point. Um, so it wouldn't be in unused modules. And then you just simply click refresh modules and then it would refresh all these modules as well. Down here, you can pin and unpin the navigation menu. Um, I already went over day and night mode. Terminal, again, such a nice thing. And then favorites, you can actually put certain things you use all the time in your favorites menu and it'll just pop up there. Theme configuration, again, I don't do any theming. Change your user and then simply sign out. And that is Webmin in a short period of time. Hopefully I can get this down. Under 20 minutes is my goal. Huh. Let me know in the comments how I did. So there you have it. That was Webmin installation and configuration. I absolutely love this tool. I don't know how you'd live without it a lot of times. Uh, it's so nice just to have the heads up display, the dashboard there. It's just a sleek and sexy solution. But with that said, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. What's your favorite part of Webmin? What do you do that I missed? And with that said, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And I'll see you in the next one.